the Holy Ghost, we're going to look. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having thin silver coins, if she loses one of them, doesn't light a lamb, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she found, has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. Let us pray once more. Gracious Lord, eternal God, we thank you for this time that we can share your word, your logos. Lord, I pray that you will speak to all of us. I believe we are ready to listen. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. This is Rally Sunday. And you are seeing a different past or preacher this morning. Something completely new. Huh? So that's why Rally Sunday perhaps will be or it is in regards to uh, the beginning of new things. And I just wanted to take a few words, uh, uh, say a few words in regard to to this opportunity of coming uh, to Redeemer uh, Lutheran Church and to uh, work with you and do ministry. I want you to be aware of my position in regard to uh, the gospel proclamation. I believe that the gospel do speak to all of us in a way that will transform us and change us and bring us to the, to the plate to know that we are indeed loved by God. So that's pretty much my intention as I come uh, to you uh, as, a, as an interim pastor, uh, work to, uh, closely with Pastor Jack and, and, and you all people. We are the church. We are the people that are called by God himself to be proclaimers of the good news. I believe you know that. We, are, we come on Sunday morning and, and perhaps we, we, we tend to forget that there is a position that we have. There is a recognition that we have before God as children of God. We have been called out by him through Jesus Christ. We have been placed on this earth to to make a difference, to change things that perhaps are not really acceptable before God. So we are voices of the good news. And as we gather as the people of God uh, on a Sunday morning or Saturday night, uh, the question that perhaps this morning I will ask you, and by the way, let me tell you something. Uh, I come from the Hispanic tradition. And sometimes the Latino, they kind of get carried away in their own conversation. 
And if you have not seen uh, perhaps a Cuban person and a Dominican talking to each other, you feel that they are going to fight in a minute. That's not the case. That's the way that they, they project who they are and they like to do that. So if you see me really uh, coming too close to you and so on, don't be afraid. Okay? Just feel that I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the, the community, part of who you are. And again, as I proclaim the good news, it's, it's something exciting me. As I read, as you all, as we read today gospel reading, it seems to me that uh, this morning in, in, our, in our celebration, there are two kinds of people that are present. According to what I read, there are those who are called by the Pharisees and the scribes sinners and tax collectors. And on the other hand, we have the Pharisees and the scribes that are also there, present. Now, where are we going to seat the scribes and the Pharisees this morning? When I read the gospel, I noticed that the, the tax collector and the sinners and the Pharisees and the scribes, they all came to listen to Jesus. They all pulled away to come to this man, to this fellow. It's very interesting that they, the Pharisee and the scribe, they're not saying to Jesus, this Jesus. No, they're saying this fellow, this particular man. Is perhaps doing something that is not too really accustomed to do. He is hanging around with the tax collectors and the sinners. Not only he's hanging around with them, but he is also sharing as he is eating together. So he's eating and having a good time with those who are really mm, those people. They all came to Jesus in a way. But I believe that the, the, the sinners and the tax collector came to Jesus with a specific purpose. They came to listen to Jesus. And they are not really saying anything. They are not really advocating anything else. But they are taking the time to listen to this master. They are listening closely to this man who is, has something completely different than the, what they knew. The language that Jesus is using has some certain power that they were touching their lives and they are coming to listen, simply to sit around and to hang around with this man who is really giving me what I have, what I need. And Jesus, in his own way, is saying to them, you come to me, and I will give you what you need. Because, you know, I came to rescue that that was lost. In the same matter, we are among the same group. There were the Pharisees and the scribes. They were simply there to point out fingers. Look at him. He's doing the wrong thing and he doesn't know that he's doing it. What's the matter with him? If he knew what is he doing, he would not be doing that. Pretty much they're saying, I dare you, old, old man, fellow, to do what you're doing. And to try to represent us. We are different than thou or holy than thou. That's not how we're supposed to behave. We have different in the definition. We are people who are called to be different in, and you are messing out. So that we are accusing Jesus directly. It was a personal 
dynamics. My dear brothers and sisters, I hate to say this, but sometimes even among the people of God, we sometimes like to point fingers. And we do that in many directions. You see how she's dressing? Or you see what he's saying? What is she doing that for? That's not acceptable. And we go to the point that we took that uh, personally. It will be a personal definition. What is he doing that for? The point of this parable that Jesus is using to clearly make a point to the Pharisees and the scribes is this. And for us is this. When we come on Sunday morning, sometimes we are invited to recite or to think about who we are. We are sinners who need repentance. And on a Sunday morning, the first part of the service sometimes it gives us an invitation for us to recite 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If I say, or if we say we don't have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, you know it, God, who is faithful and just, will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right there in the beginning of the service. What does that mean? We recognize that we need salvation. We recognize our personal limitation before God Almighty. We recognize that the gift that we have received in Christ Jesus, the grace of God, is necessary, is important for all of us to functionally proclaim to others the goodness and the grace and the love for Jesus Christ. We need to admit that we need salvation, that we need the grace. We need to open our heart to indeed receive that grace and to be grateful to God for the things that he has done for us. Now the Pharisees and the scribes, they were not in a position. They were simply saying, you are doing the wrong thing. I don't need you, you need us in the way. And Jesus, using the two parables, there will be three if you recomplete the whole text. The first two, or the three of them, it talks about something that was lost. The sheep that went straight, lost. The woman lost a coin. And Jesus is using this moment to say, you see, Pharisee and scribe, that is what the grace of God is all about. Even when one sinners, when you and I do repent in the front of Jesus and the front of Jesus Christ, and we ask for forgiveness, heaven rejoices. We are unique before our God Almighty. That's why he's saying to us, Jesus the Christ. He saw was the need of the world. He saw all of us go straight, different direction, pointing fingers from, from here to there. And he said to, in a way, I'm going to send my only begotten son so they can be saved. Because I do care for them and I love them. And I want them to be with me in heaven. I want to, the angels to rejoice as they celebrate on Sunday morning. That's what we have. And that's what Jesus has given to the Pharisees and the scribes and to all of us together. Personally, I thank the Lord for Jesus. He becomes my Savior. He becomes your Savior. He becomes the gift of grace that we all need. In the end, Jesus simply explained to those who were pointing finger 
that really they need to face the reality that in him there's no need to do so. He came to us. And this morning as we gather as people of God, we are blessed tremendously by simply accepting the gift of his grace and his love and his compassion. And that is something for us to really be excited about. And able to really, as a church, the paracletus, those who are called the paracletus, the Holy Spirit that's with us, is telling us to really proclaim that to others. And to be the voice that this world is in need of hearing. The good news about Jesus Christ. To him be your glory and honor. Amen.